Finally, I am live. Hey, my name's Gary. We're going to be working on baritone ukulele today. The topic of today's activity will be La Cucaracha. And it is an awesome, fun song with a unique um, way we tackle it. And so you should run over to jollyrogerukulele.com and pick up the sheet music and while I am posting the link, and then I we will meet in uh, three minutes to get started on this. If you're watching the recording, obviously fast forward your way three minutes, and then we will get started. You might want to do four because I'm kind of chatty today. And let's double check if the link works, which it does. Takes me right here. Um, if you are just hanging out, listening me blather on stuff you should know we're rebuilding we're building a baritone ukulele program identical to the ukulele program i teach uh the difference will be that you gotta be a tiny bit smarter to be a baritone ukulele player because sometimes you will be playing as a soloist but lots and lots of times you'll be playing in accompaniment to uh be playing an accompaniment with other ukulele players and they're in a different key than you of course and so we got to make sure you're super smart to be able to handle that situation and um, we'll be working on all of that this you know continuously really to be talking about hey what do you do in this situation when you are by yourself and what do you do in this situation when you're playing with others and um so that's one of the activities that we'll be doing this week. And I just hit the wrong button, so stop. Stop. Okay, go back. I got this little gadget I bought. It was supposed to make things easier. Um, I paid a lot of money for it, so I feel like I have to use it. But it turns out it has not made anything easier. And just a plain old book of music would have done me uh, just fine. Music. No, nope. let's go back. You know, three ring binder is the choice the, the choice among all professionals all right so i need to download from here i gotta download what are we working on this week <laughs> i am working on la cucaracha all through the night and so this week all through the night home on the range la cucaracha all those are really not lovely all through the night baritone and home on the H I J K L, and then we will be doing getting started on arpeggio playing too, this week, which is exciting. And now we're on the H's, getting too many songs. Home on the range, home on the range, baritone, and la cucaracha, F G H I J K, la cucaracha baritone right there okay download all of those three Boom. one just like that done you could the end the internet's pretty fast here let's see all right guys let me get get this opened up properly storage downloads Baritone. Sometimes being organized is a mixed blessing. And today our topic is La Cucaracha. All right, let's see. That should get me ready to go. And oh, everybody's here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I was on the other window, busy yammering to myself. How are we? Baritone players, rock on. Jack, aloha. Good to see you, bud. Cindy. Baritone with new strings sounds good. So, Cindy's so Cindy's point is yes, this new string sound good. The question I have for you, baritone players, is when do you need to change your strings? How often do you change strings? That's the question at hand. Carol's ready for baritone. Vic is here and ready. Uh, Terry had baritone while travel. Actually, I'm going in. Not going anywhere. Who am I? <laughs> well, no. Terry went to all 50 states with his ukulele back in the day. All 50. And uh, so now he's got to repeat that whole idea with the baritone ukulele. Michalina, how are you? 
Cindy, only when they unwind, <laughs> only when your strings explode do you need to change them. So, kids, here's the thing. Every single year, whether you think they need to be replaced or not, you have to put, replace your strings at least once a year. You guys are pretty serious musicians. You're going to be playing uh, a little bit more often than that. And so you may end up being every six to eight to ten months. Okay. Um, here's what I know about baritones and baritone strings. Under the very best of conditions, baritones sound wonderful but they don't sound as wonderful as some other instruments. And so you really do want them. You really do want to keep them in top shape. Okay. I get baritones all the time that are just completely not been taken care of. Uh, people just don't fall through. There's just not enough support for baritones. Hopefully we're making a small dent in that and by doing these, these, um, in for these lessons, but, uh, but with baritones more so than a ukulele pretty much sounds good no matter what guitar sounds good no matter what um but baritones you don't really want to have three four five year old strings on you really don't they're just not it's just not going to work for you um so my my the thing that we talked about is every year you change your strings whether you whether you played it or not whether you think they need to be changed or not they do modern strings decay within a year and you really do need to change them every year i strongly recommend that you put on savarez classical guitar strings i believe the number is 540j and i will double check that but it's the high tension savarez uh you uh classical guitar strings you're going to use strings number one and string number two. You're going to throw away string number three. You're going to put on strings four and five. And you're going to throw away string number six. And um, if you ever need a string number six, you can come to my office. I have hundreds of them because <laughs> I don't actually throw them away. I put them in this drawer and I have a drawer full of sixes. Um, so um, uh, if you have white strings or black strings on your baritone ukulele you are needlessly holding yourself back sonically um, when i see a uh, lots of these other types of strings i've used a ton of different strings on baritones trying to find the best one and i've had wasted a lot of money and a lot of time and some of the baritone players in our orchestra have been sort of guinea pigs for that here let's try this let's try this let's try this and what we've come down to I think after many, many, many unsuccessful experiments is Savara's 540Js. I'm pretty sure that's the number. It's a little blue package. Um, strings one and two, four and five. And I think you'll get the best sound. And so if you've never changed your baritone strings uh, and you live locally, obviously, I'm happy to do that for you. If you don't live locally, then um, you want to buy those strings and then go to the guitar shop and have them put them on for you. Um, you can put them on yourself, of course. On one of these days, I'll do a video on how to change your own strings. But um, but it usually taking it into the guitar shop, they'll they'll double check the fret ends and they'll make sure your action isn't too high and that sort of stuff. Um, don't make them don't let them set it down too low because on baritone sometimes it's fun to get after it a little bit. Uh, we do a lot more strumming than you do on classical guitar, so we need a little bit of higher action with your strings away from the fretboard than we would on some of the other instruments and so um, that's my suggestion for you if you've never changed your guitar or your baritone strings um, we want you you will do better if you if it's been if you bought it in the last six months you're probably whatever strings are on it are fine but after that once a year um, put those uh, five savara's 540 j's on and you'll do yourself a favor you'll be really happy with the result um carol i have never changed strings myself but COVID is supposed to be <laughs> i know guys you're all gonna end up we're all gonna end up farming our own food here if they don't get things turned around if we don't get this if we don't stay home and wear a damn mask um terry i'm trying out savara's 542 j's now i like the balance in the higher tension but still getting used to it. okay so so terry's up there he's doing some doing some testing um if you have been playing a certain set of strings and then you put on the strings i recommend uh you'll be like well these don't sound like a uh, you know there's a change but it takes a little bit of getting used to um i have done a couple hundred probably baritone strings over the last few, few years and um, we've, we've tried them all. We've tried lots and lots of choices. And so um, we'll find out how Terry does with his and see what, what he comes up with. 
Um, hey, Diane, welcome back. Mm -hmm. um, 540 days. Okay, so Terry is trying the ones that I recommended. We'll see. So far, he says uh, uh, you know, the balance and the higher tension uh, still take a little getting used to. Yeah, this sound's going to be different, right? I used to use on my tenor ukulele these strings called Southeast Coast, and they were fabulous. And then that guy got sick and went out of business. And so now I've had to go take my own medicine and start trying to find what I think is the best strings for that particular instrument. And it's been a, it's been a sad and lonely journey, but uh, sooner or later I'll find the right setup. So, all right. La Cucaracha. Guys, the reason we're playing this is that it gets you a chance to have a different play differently than most of the stuff I teach you. Most of the stuff I teach you, I want you to play slow. I want you to play beautiful. I want you to play connected. I want it to all sound beautiful and sensitive and like you are a really deep thinking, emotional musician. That's what I want you to do. Not so much on La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha is obviously a traditional Mexican tune and it is hilarious <laughs> that it's a song and it it's actually there's a sense there's so much humanity in this thing i just adore it um and you can say i don't like that song fine go ahead don't like the song but the skill level that we have to learn here is really essential and this is a perfect song to do it on okay so first thing let's talk about let's talk about d chord let's make sure that that's a thing for you index finger third string second fret middle finger bottom string Second fret, ring finger out here. Third fret, second string. Okay, beautiful chord. You guys are much luckier on having D chord here than ukulele players. It's here, and it's hard to do, right? And it doesn't sound as good as it should. You guys have a beautiful D chord, and so much music's written in D. It's wonderful. Now, your friend with D chord is A chord, which is a D chord on ukulele, but you're, you've got your A chord here. Much easier for you to fit your fingers in, no matter how big they are, into that little space. And frankly, even if you got pretty big fingers, you're in better shape than when you play guitar. The frets are even wider, so you've got a ton of room, but the, the strings are narrow, closer together. And so on guitar, this is actually pretty hard to do, but on baritone, it's perfect. Index, middle, ring. Make sure you leave this bottom string open. That's your A chord. All right. Uh, next thing about this song. Uh, you want to know what it's about because when you go through the internet, there's a million different versions of this out there. Um, so what I did is I wrote what, like, they're like, I don't know if this is official. Nobody knows what's official. There's no correct way to do this. But what I gave you was what I think the essence of what the song was about. And I gave you, uh, since I don't know any Spanish, I went ahead and just converted them into singable English words. And uh, what the story in this in the song is, is there's a cockroach. She doesn't, have, she's missing a leg. And but she still loves dancing every time she hears music playing. And so you want to picture a cockroach dancing to this music, but because she's missing a leg, it's a little awkward. Okay. Um, and uh, when the people of the house see this little cockroach dancing to the music, they take a broom and they chase her out of the house. And so that's the story that goes on. When she goes outside, she still hears the music play. So she comes back in and dances some more. So that's the story behind that. Um, the words I wrote uh, for this were are based on the idea behind the song. And they are not are not official, but they're pretty singable. Okay, um, There are no official words. Okay, Next thing on this one, because we're going to be doing some uh, staccato playing today, um, rather than strumming it, once there was a little cockroach, she was born without a leg you could do that it's fine but i don't want you to do that i want you to do this and i want four beats in every major one two three four and then when you get to the a and back to d so four beats in every major whatever the chord is grab that um we're going to be creating a um a cockroach dancing feeling, a, a miss, a cockroach missing a leg dancing feeling. So we're looking, trying to get a little dun 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 dun. Okay, and we're, that's what we're looking to try to try to get somehow. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Terry says they were brighter than the Worth baritone strings I was using. Yeah, the, the, uh, 
I'm baritone. You don't need those dark sounding worth strings. You really don't. We're, we do everything we can with this instrument to brighten it up. <laughs> yeah, um, the, 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 this instrument is does not need that uh, those darker toned strings. So uh, good, good, interesting, Terry. Glad you're already hearing that. All right, I'm going to count four. Notice you have a rest on the first beat, but not if you're chords, right? If you're chords, you play. Once there was a little cockroach. Okay, so four beats per measure. One, two, three, four. Once there was a little cockroach. She was born without a Lego. All she wanted was to dance. Oh, dance a jig while music played. Stop here and I ask you, where do we go from here? And what you should know at this point is at the end of measure eight, there's a repeat, and that repeat matches up with measure one, right? And you've probably taken a little highlighter at the front side of measure eight to say, hey, think, and then a little highlighter on measure one so that your eyes will track quickly to the next repeat. Okay, go back to measure one. One, two, three, four. But that little bitty cockroach, she was chased out every door, oh. oh but the music always charmed her, and she danced again too. And then you're going to go to day. Remember, the second time through, you skip measure eight because that's part of the first repeat. You see the bracket above it. It says one. You play it through the first time through. The second time through, you go to measure nine. Um, and then if you're looking on to page two, notice nine plays all the way down until 17. When you get to 17, that's the end of the first repeat for that section. And you're going to go back to measure uh, 10. Okay, so again, a little piece of highlighter at the beginning of 17 and a little bit on measure uh, 10, and it's going to help your eye track properly. You're not going to go back to 9. We don't go, we're only going to play that one time. Okay, so measure 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, day. The little cockroach, the little cockroach. All she wanted was to dance. She didn't mind that her leg was missing when she heard the music play back to ten the little cock roach the little cock roach dance a jig while music played her joyful heart left her teary eye wept then they chased her out the door okay, so that's how you would sing it Sing it better than I sing, obviously. Duh. <laughs> um, but that's the idea. And we and the reason I want you to do this is because we want to get that. <coughs> I apologize. That probably blew your speakers out at home. Uh, my, my ears are tearing up. My nose is full of stuff. There's obviously dust in the air. Ugh. Ugh. I'm, I'm going to make it through the broadcast, and then I'm going to go die. Um, we are trying to get the feeling of a cockroach dancing across, you know, the the uh, terracotta floor sort of thing. Um, so now let's play the melody, okay? And again, um, we are always thinking in terms of staccato on this. So instead of... Right, which would be fine. What we're looking for is to get a staccato feeling. And what we want to do is, as soon as you hit it, then loosen this grip. Okay, I'm not actually lifting it off the string. I'm just letting it lift up to stop the sound. And then I'm going to get... Okay, that's what we're after. To get that... Dun, 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 dun. Okay. The next thing is in measure three, notice you're going to go up to fives and sevens. So you probably either want to be in fifth position, which puts your ring finger on seven, or you could go to fourth position and play middle and pinky, whichever you want to do. But just know when you're going up to five and seven, you want to have a strategy in place to do that. Let's give it a try from the top. One, two, three, four, rest. <laughs> Rest. 
Top, rest. Rest, rest. Rest. Rest, rest. And then you jump to nine. Okay, let's keep going from measure nine. One, two, rest. Seventeen back to ten. Rest. Rest. That's it. Okay. Let's go through and just play the whole thing, top to bottom. One, two, three. Four, rest. So again, short and sweet. So in other words, normally we want, but in this case we want, just get it to stop. Just loose. You don't have to actually lift your left hand fingers up, just loosen them and that'll make the sound stop. All right, let's dig through the tough acts and see what else we, tough, tough uke, see if there's any other things to talk about. So start with your D chord, okay? And this is where this, this comes in. You want bump and then immediately loosen up on your chord um, normally we want right to get the, all of those notes to connect together but on this song we would like to have a more um, urgent feeling to it and that's where staccato comes in yeah, that's what you're after Okay, see, let's give it a try. Staccato playing will come up. I use it all of the time. It's one of those little techniques where you're sort of, uh, it, it gives you a chance to do something a tiny bit different than the guy next to you and uh, will make you sound a little bit more professional in some ways. Okay, from the top. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Bar chord here um, on two, middle finger on three, and then roll this up to open up this bottom thing. Sometimes that works. Um, by the way, guys, I'm getting a internet challenge here, which 
is a tiny bit of a relief to me. <laughs> um, I have been worried that we we're getting weird internet slowdowns just be at my house, but it's happening here as well. So maybe you're still there, maybe you're not. I hope you are, um, but I might be glitching a little bit um, according to the information that's happening on my screen. Okay. Um, and of course, if you're there, let me know. Uh, Terry's still there. Okay, good. Um, so when we get to that measure four, you, you've got A7, and you can roll up if you're double jointed, but I'm not double jointed enough to do that successfully. Nicolina is still present. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so good news is it's not my setup at the house. It's something to do with YouTube. All right, that eliminates one variable that we've been wondering about. Come back quickly. Okay, thanks, Jack. All right, yeah, YouTube's busy. A little bit of little bit of internet and going on. All right, so that's measure four. Let's go down to measure five. Diane's glitching. All right. Okay. So, uh, not. What are we going to do? Nothing. We're going to keep playing. Hopefully, you'll unglitch. From measure five one, two, three, four. Can I add A7? A. Five seven five three two zero oh, D chord, and then here it's just a turnaround, right? D two three two back up to the top. Let's play from measure one second time through. One two three four. still three three probably just drag your ring finger back to get the twos and then two twos three twos And then slide up to seven, pinky on ten. Okay, I gave you this. Um, either way, glissando might be a funny way to end it differently. There's your long chord, or just get to ignore the glissando and just give me a regular clink. Um, either way. Again, most of the time we're trying to get beautiful, beautiful music out of this, but we also want the ability to get um, different textures, and that's what we're working on here. So let's we got it's, we, we're done. <laughs> Gosh, look at us! We, you guys are killing it. Uh, let's play through it any way you want, and then over obviously through the evening, mess around with this. This is a song that's going to get stuck in your head tonight, so you might as well be good at it while you're stuck at it. It's while it's stuck in your head. Let's play through the whole thing one time. Uh, top to bottom, as written with the repeats, and then uh, and then we'll send you on your way. We'll talk a little bit about the week, okay? From the top, one, two, three, four.
So much fun. So much fun. A lot different than we usually play, but um, still a perfectly truthful and legitimate way that you're going to play sometimes. And uh, so not, not necessarily a whole song of that, like we do on this song, but you will. it's not uncommon for you to be able to to want to, you know, for not to want to, but to put in some staccato playing in, in songs. You know, happens, like I say, every day I put in some probably. Uh, just just to mix up the textures and to, to give yourself some other ideas about making a song come alive. So hopefully that's fun. Not not necessarily the world's greatest song ever written, but certainly a little bit of fun. Uh, this week, guys, um, tomorrow night is all through the night, which, again, we will do a ton of picking on that one. But we'll be picking with the intention of having it all flow together and be nice and smooth and beautiful. That's a lullaby. Feel free to get started on that one. That one is not terribly difficult song. It was my first song I ever memorized. In fact, uh, there's really only eight measures out of 16 that are, are different than uh, the first four. And so... Um, it's a relatively approachable song, uh, but to get it right, to get it beautiful, to make it a lullaby, to really make the thing come together, we're going to be working on getting your plucking together nice and smooth. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to do Home on the Range, most of, just absolutely the best arrangement. I just love my, the arrangement of that, and I think it's something that uh, it's going to make your baritone really sound like a good old-fashioned cowboy romp, and it's uh, just beautiful, nice and slow, melodic, uh, piece um your key of g arpeggio i was going to start the week with that but i didn't have time over the weekend to get it together for you it's going to be the same as the key of c arpeggio for the ukulele players it just takes a while for me to to um, cut it. creating baritone music is surprisingly slow <laughs> uh for after you would think oh i've got the ukulele music done i can just copy paste and it'll be on baritone but that isn't how it works at all so uh, it does take me longer to put this stuff together than i wish so um, but i'll have it together for you certainly by thursday um and then uh, and then it'll be the end of the week so um, I'm excited about the, the week ahead. Those of you guys that are members of the website, please remember that tonight is um, uh, orchestra. And so I'm putting out legitimate sort of baritone, not sort of, let me put it this way. I'm putting out ensemble baritone arrangements to match what the ukulele players are doing, which is how you will typically play as a baritone player, which is, you will be playing in a lower, usually a lower voicing. And so you end up doing a lot of work on strings uh, three and four, whereas the ukulele players are doing a lot of work on strings one and two. And it's really, really important for you guys to get where you're comfortable playing with those strings because typically when we do an arrangement we have baritone voicing for a reason we need that lower sound and so we use the lower portions of your baritone a lot the other nice thing about ukulele uh orchestra is it's going to get you where you can't you don't care about your mistakes anymore and that is a long way for some people to go some of you had very successful careers accounting engineering uh teaching whatever uh and you have the you are used to doing things the right way. <laughs> and when you come to music and I'm like, yeah, don't worry about your mistakes. It's fine. Everybody makes them. That's not a, that's not an easy pill to swallow in the beginning. And so um, by coming to orchestra, uh, what you do is we're moving forward. And if you made a mistake, you got to let that be in the past. And those of you guys that are golfers will know exactly what I'm talking about. When you blow the tee shot and then you also then blow the fairway shot because you're still mad about the tee shot. Um, that is, is what we got to get away from and that's what orchestra will do for you so if you're a member and you should be a member come on i mean seriously it's five bucks for the first week and 25 bucks for the quarter after that uh you you um can come join us get all the sheet music get all set up um, we have full legitimate baritone melodies and chord arrangements for them i don't do a tuck you for you on ensemble music because we need to put it in a different key for your solo stuff like the stuff that i give you here will be solo stuff where you will have your full tough uke arrangements but in orchestra that's not what we typically do we typically don't play or uh, full tough uke arrangements in orchestra anyway because there's no point we usually have five to a hundred players and, and no one will know you're playing tough uke uh, but uh so we need to play melody and chords and we need to play them well and we need to play them super fast and so that's what we work on in the monday nights uh, we'll do that and they're all going to be love songs so they're all going to be pretty 
from uh, September to October. And then of course, um, in November, we dig into Christmas music. So, um, so that's the plan. And so hopefully um, you've got a membership to the website, just come in and join us tonight. And uh, even if you don't have a membership, at least come and sit in and listen and you can figure out what we're doing there. Um, and that's it. And that's what I know. Okay. Let's see. Um, Cindy, like a staccato ending as if she's being swept out the door. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> right. Right. I like, yeah. Poor thing. She, she just likes to dance, you know, and she, and it makes her cry. It's so beautiful. Um, nice. I like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is a fun one to play. It is fun. So orchestra is quite a stretch. It is. It's supposed to be right. Because when here, we slow stuff down. We want to make sure that because we're doing complex stuff. So things we play much slower during the week at not at the orchestra, the opposite happens. We simplify your individual part, but then we speed the thing way up. And so it is, it is a stretch. It's absolutely. And we have that happen in our locally here. You know, I have people go through my intro program. They really know how to play. They come to orchestra and the first couple of times is kind of demoralizing because the, the speed of the thing is so fast. And so that's one of the things I want you to get used to is that ukulele players hey i i gotta let my mistakes go i gotta get where i'm just letting my gariness get out of the way and my fingers can just play and um, that's I, the only way i know to do that is to show up and and fight your way through that a little bit so yeah um all right Vic, good to see you carol let's see tennis too got any is tennis the same way i here's what i know about tennis um you buy a racket, you buy the balls, you go out and you hit them back and forth across the net for about an hour. Then you're all tired out and then you never go back ever. <laughs> and you have this tennis racket and three balls in the thing for the rest of your life. That's what I know about tennis. I've, got, I've done it about four times. Where I'm like, I'm going to start playing tennis. You go buy all the stuff and then you don't keep going. Um, so, yeah, I bet tennis would be exactly, right? You blow the shot and you're just eating at you, and then all of a sudden your next shot's the bad one, too. That's interesting, Carol. That's good to know. Michalina, someone once said perfection is the enemy of good enough. I can't remember who. <laughs> perfection is the enemy of good enough. I like that. I think I like that. I mean, obviously, we're always shooting for perfection, but we have to be smart that it doesn't exist and that it's not really the goal. It's the North Star. We're shooting toward the North Star, which is perfection. Uh, but we can't let that, we can't not let not getting to the North Star create a, a bad decisions in the present. You know, we just, the, the, the perfection is one of those things. I, I joke with, uh, we have a few advanced musicians who come to these things now. And I always say, uh, the only time you got to get it perfect is when you're, your uh, solo recital for your master's degree, right? And pretty much they're all like, yep, that's exactly when you have to have it perfect. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, perfection is not our goal. It's, it's our North Star. That's where we're headed. We just aren't going to get there. All right. Have a great afternoon, you guys. I will see some of you in guitar. I'll see the rest of you, uh, some of you tonight, and then I'll see everybody here uh, again tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow we have all through the night. Beautiful piece of music tomorrow. So uh, I will uh, hit the hit end of stream. Hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Go play cockroach songs. It's really good for you. <laughs> have a good day.